Let's face it, it's time to talk about faces. Sci-Fi War Gamers. Greetings hobby fans, my name's Marcel and it's my mission to help you explore the hobby. So today we are talking about faces on miniatures or painting faces or facing up to the art of painting faces on your miniatures. It's time to face it! Anyway, back in the 80s, faces even then were considered conceit. I do apologise for this momentary bah. Even faces were considered important on miniatures. So let's dive in and have a look. Heavy metal faces. Like this. Before, we've talked about the shield as a focal point of a miniature. This is because the shield is a large, brightly coloured area that draws the eye. The actual figure itself has its own focal point, quite independent of how it's dressed or what items it carries. This is of course the figure's head, or more specifically, the figure's face, and even in closer detail, the ways the eyes of a figure are painted define the particular character of the model. For the purposes of this video, I'm only going to talk about humans and orcs and then have a look at some examples, as these are the most commonly painted figure types. But, as usual, the standard guidelines and techniques can apply to any race or type of creature you want to paint. Most figure painters leave the face until last. Interestingly, a figure that looks bland during the rest of the painting process comes to life when the face has been painted. This is important. A lot of people abandon a figure before they've finished because they feel that the miniature has been let down by a bad paint job, yet the completion of the face may be all it needs to become a satisfactory piece of work. By comparison, some painters prefer to make the face their first job, and I myself am included in this category, as it's the most important element in the process. They will only continue working on a figure if they deem the face to be a success. When and how you work on the face really depends upon the criteria you apply to a given model. Here are some demonettes of Slanesh from the forthcoming Realm of Chaos miniatures range. The base colour is simply a light flesh tone. Pale ink washes have been added for shading and note how the exaggerated colours on the lips and ears help make the miniatures look fierce and strange. Here's a space orc. Mike McVeigh's careful blending of goblin green, a green ink wash for shading, and goblin green mixed with bilious green and white for the highlights. A squat by Mike McVeigh. The hardened warrior look results from a successful reddy brown shading and the grey beard. Here's JB's Astropath conversion. The base colour was white, which was then washed with thinned inks. The face was painted with acrylics. Next up is a Space Marine by Ali Morrison. The face receives the standard treatment. But note how the subtly shaded white hair gives the officer a distinguished look. Mike McVeigh's Eldar feel alien because of the extremely pale facial colouring. Blue ink is used for the war paint and the hair colour. These space adventurers show how flesh tones can be used to achieve different racial effects. Here's a Chaos Thug conversion by Darren Matthews, and he's used Citadel colour and inks. Darren's use of bright colours suit the subject. The face of this astropath by M Squared is nicely framed in green by the cowl. The blind white eyes outlined in red are particularly dynamic. Here's another dwarf whose character comes from underplaying the eyes and exaggerating the lip. This dwarf berserker's carefully picked out teeth 
complete his angry countenance. Colin Dixon's Viking Warlord is an example of good blending resulting in a moody, natural look. Phil Lewis's Melnabonians demonstrate what can be achieved by building on top of a black undercoat with layers of successively lighter shades, and this is a very, very common technique nowadays. Here's another one of Ali Morrison's miniatures. This time, it's a troll. The pale washers on a light base colour contrast with the blue war paint and the red mushroom hair. So there you go, miniature faces in the 1980s. What did you guys think of the advice? Does the advice still hold up today? Do you paint your faces the same way as you did years ago? What important lessons have you learnt when it comes to painting faces? How do you paint your eyes? I want to know. Let us know in the comments below. There's someone outside discussing something important. They're on the telephone. Um, where was I? So yeah, faces. What is your favorite base color for painting faces? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoy the content on this channel, then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below. If you want to see some more old Hammer videos, and I know you do, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. That means you, Michael. As always, thank you very much for watching and always remember to drill your barrels.